My brothers and sisters, may the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You lock the kingdom of heaven before men. You do not enter yourselves, nor do you allow entrance to those trying to enter. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You traverse sea and land to make one convert. And when that happens, you make him a child of Gehenna, twice as much as yourselves. Woe to you, blind guides, who say, If one swears by the temple, it means nothing. But if one swears by the gold of the temple, one is obligated. Blind fools, which is greater, the gold or the temple that made the gold sacred? And you say, if one swears by the altar, it means nothing. But if one swears by the gift on the altar, one is obligated. You blind ones, which is greater, the gift or the altar that makes the gift sacred? One who swears by the altar swears by it and all that is upon it. One who swears by the temple swears by it and by him who dwells in it. One who swears by heaven swears by the throne of God and by him who is seated on it. The Gospel of the Lord. Matthew recounts for us eight beatitudes of being, a way of thinking and acting and living out the call of the kingdom of heaven. And he also presents to us, as we begin to see today, a series of woes, a kind of counterbalancing the things we should be doing with the things we should not be doing. And so we hear the first three woes that Jesus gives us of the seven that he presents. And it shows, sadly, how over time people can kind of lose the vision, can lose the sense of what the reality really is and be focused so into little things that they miss the point entirely. And we surely see many examples of that, sadly, of some of the Pharisees and scribes during the course of the Gospel story because they're constantly looking for things that are secondary and making them first and foremost. A couple of those classic examples are where a man comes for healing on the Sabbath and they complain that he's coming on the Sabbath for healing, that he should wait until another day to do this, and he's not fulfilling, therefore, the requirements of the Sabbath. In another instance, somebody's asked to pick up his mat and walk, and again, because it's on the Sabbath day, they're complaining that he should just wait and sit on the mat until the next day and then pick up the mat and walk because he's missing the point of the Sabbath. Jesus looks at these things, of course, and shakes his head undoubtedly and says, you're missing the point. You're focusing into the wrong things. And we see that this morning in the Gospel text as he talks about how they end up making things that are secondary, primary. Uh, there's one point also in the Scriptures, for example, where they talk about if you are presenting something to God as a gift, it is raka, and therefore you do not, are not obligated to take care of your parents. The money goes to the other one. And this is sometimes carried over into kind of a little joke where the person says, Lord, here's the basket of money. I'll throw it up to you. You take what you want. What comes back down, I'll take. And of course, it's thrown up and all comes back down again. And so they end up shifting the point as to what it should be all about. We sometimes can fall prey to the same thing. We get so taken up with secondary things and little elements that we miss the broader vision, we miss the greater, greater truth. And so this morning as we gather again at this table of faith to be sustained by the scriptures, by the Eucharist, let's be mindful of the fact of how we must be always open to the ways and to the promises of God rather than our own that we have to somehow make them always the priority that supersedes the things that we think are so very important.